there's a romance in, in oceanography, right? So there is still so much unknown because it's corrosive, remote, deep, you know, inaccessible. So there is a lot to learn about it. Early on, uh, going out to sea satisfied sort of the both parts of my personality. I enjoy the math and the physics part, but also that unknown territory that the ocean represented was, was very exciting to me. In oceanography, it wasn't until the early 80s that women were even allowed on research vessels. So that sort of tells you that there was a delay, at least the women who wanted to go out and do observations. So when I started in graduate studies in my field, which is called physical oceanography, there were five women that are above me. I mean, I know all of them personally. That tells you how small it was, the, n the number of women. And now, you know, they're just hundreds. Um, and it just gives me no end, you know, of satisfaction when we go to large conferences and just to see, you know, the early career scientists are equal number of women and men. I've just had this underlying passion about mentoring um, and also just really getting people interested, you know, in science spent many decades focusing on getting more women, you know, in my field, and now I'm particularly interested in getting underrepresented minorities in my field. So really, whether it's my job as a dean, I'm also the president of my professional society, or in research, so the most gratifying parts of all of those are really the bringing people together, um, mentoring the early career scientists and the students, and really coalescing around, you know, common visions. A lot of times people say, you know, they think you take a leadership position because you want to be a leader. And I've always just really, I've just had things that I've wanted to do, that I've believed in. And so that's sort of, I've carried that purpose. And that's what propels you to that leadership position.